we're joined by a very special guest, Dr. Rondeau from Rondeau Seminars. Dr. Rondeau is a general dentist, just like most of you, and over the past 32 years, over 20,000 dentists have attended his courses and lectures, which is exactly why we have asked him to join us here today. Just in case you guys are not familiar with us, we're a dental marketing agency. We believe in thinking different from other mass marketing companies that you're probably used to. And we help you stand up against corporate dentistry. We do this by helping independent practices just like yourself, build genuine relationships with patients, create and manage positive online reputations, drive quality new patients into the practice, and retain your current patients. And you're probably thinking, how the heck do you do that? We do all of this by creating custom, relatable, personalized, and distinctly different campaigns that reflect the needs and personalities of each individual practice. It's as simple as that. I also want to mention, if you haven't already, you really should get yourself a free copy of Jackie's new book, Dental Disruption, The Decade That Changed Dentistry. It's entirely free and jam-packed with valuable information that discusses why you can't afford to be marketing your practice today the same way you were a decade ago and what you must be doing now to get real proven results. We've gotten some really great feedback already on Jackie's second book and it even ships for free so there's really no reason why you shouldn't order your copy today. Simply visit dentaldisruption.com to place your free order and you'll have it in your hands in just a few days. And in today's episode, Dr. Rondo is going to share with us the four main benefits of adding ortho and sleep and TMD to your general practice. We invited Dr. Rondo to speak with us today because most of our listeners uh, at one point consider adding or have begun expanding their treatment portfolio in their general practice. And as a marketing company, we believe in marketing these very specific services and highlighting them to help a general practice stand out in their marketplace. So it's no surprise that we believe in everything Dr. Rondo teaches. Dr. Rondo is going to give us the four reasons why every single general dentist needs to add one or both of these services to their practice today. And I can assure you that if you have not considered these, you are absolutely missing out. So Dr. Rondo, before we jump into the four reasons every general dentist should consider um, adding these services to their practice, why don't you tell us and our listeners a little bit more about yourself? Well, basically, I've been doing general dentistry for, believe it or not, 52 years. And I guess I did general dentistry, fillings and root canals and dentures for about 10 years, and then kind of uh, attended a course in orthodontics and got kind of fired up on that, said, you know, this looks really good, particularly when we were helping patients and where I was doing something that they really wanted. I mean, nobody really wants a filling, you know. <laughs> of course. Or a root canal, but they really want straight teeth. And, and the mothers were so appreciative of me doing early treatment, plus the course I took, we were learning to treat children, and most dental schools don't teach courses on how to treat children. Most orthodontic programs, graduate programs, don't teach how to treat children, and yet mothers, all 75% of children have a malocclusion. So you got 75% of children with a problem and nobody trained to treat them. I thought it was a very good opportunity for me to get in there. And I've kind of built my reputation on that over the last 35 years. So for 35 years, I've been treating these children, and I've been, I've been very busy in my practice. And then I decided, um, I read a book by Napoleon Hill that said, Think and Grow Rich. And uh, he was a billionaire, and he said, if you want to be rich, find out what people want and give it to them. Isn't that interesting? Find out what people want and give it to them. So I said, well... I think general dentists need to learn about early treatment for children because it's a big demand, and so that's what I've been doing for 35 years. I'm kind of happy today. I'm all excited because I've just published my first book on early orthodontic treatment for children. I just got the copy today, first copy. So I'm Very really cool. excited about that, and certainly anybody who's interested can contact Rhonda Seminars, and we will. It's about 230 pages, but it's all colored pictures of cases that I've treated all kinds of different malocclusions for children that I think um, anyone who's interested in this would be would, would certainly stimulate their interest to want to take some more courses in this because it's certainly properly trained you, you can do it now it's interesting I, I published 12 manuals course manuals on orthodontics TMD and sleep and then I just published my first book so I guess I had lots of 
preliminary books done first, but now I've got the real book, so I'm really happy. The, how much does the does the book cost, Dr. Rondo? I think it's a hundred and it's 129 or something. I really don't even know, but I think it was there's a special introductory price anyway. It's around a little over a hundred dollars. Okay, perfect. It's very, very good. We, yeah, it's, it's really priced. To, and it's very, it's a, it's a, it's a compact. It's a six by nine, so it'll fit in your purse. It'll fit in your briefcase. I mean, it's really a neat little book. And I, I'm going to, I'm probably going to offer that on my website to any patient who uh, is interested, and in, and and certainly give it to my patient when they come in, and to read about what what problems their children could have and what the solutions are. And it's, um, yeah, I'm very proud of it. I'm really happy. I'm always, you can tell I'm excited, eh? Yes, <laughs> Congra- absolutely. Congratulations. That's, uh, that's really awesome to hear. Thank you. Dr. Rendo, what are the four biggest reasons a general dentist would want to expand their dental treatment portfolio? I think the thing that I like the most is that I'm running a health-oriented dental practice now. People are coming in with problems like crooked teeth, crooked jaws, jaw problems, snoring and sleep apnea, real serious health problems. And I'm able to, to put certain appliances in their mouth and move their jaws to different positions and get rid of these problems. And um, with children, we permanently fix the problem because after we use the appliances, we use braces to, to stabilize the bite. So it's kind of interesting. If you come to my practice healthy, you leave healthy. If you come to my practice unhealthy, you leave healthier. <laughs> and I think that's really important. And of course, and of course, they pay for it. You know, I mean, it's always nice when you do something you enjoy, and you're helping people, and they appreciate it, and they thank you, and they also pay you. <laughs> and, and so it's great. I've got a staff of um, of nine. Actually, two are in run of seminars, and seven running the dental practice. And and the staff do a lot of the work. I mean, that's the part that I like too. Is that it's a staff orientated, team orientated practice. And um, they're allowed to do a lot of the records and the education of the patients, and I supervise everything, see every patient, but it's, it's a wonderful way to practice, especially when you get older. Because, you, you know, general dentistry is tough. Anybody listening to this call today knows that general dentistry is a tough, tough profession. Sure. And, um, and a lot of dentists burn out, and they just want to get out. Well, I'm 70, almost 77. Yeah. And I feel I'm just peaking. I don't think I want to get out because I really enjoy what I do. Staff do a lot of the work. The patients appreciate what I do, which is different from doing general dentistry. I mean, nobody really ever thanked me for a root canal or a filling. Right. <laughs> but they thank me daily for what I do here, and I love it. So, so I think that's a real good reason. Plus, of course, your income goes up because you're doing something which the other dentists aren't doing, and so therefore there's a demand for your services. So they, they, they phone and, and come in. Um, I really like the fact that the mothers really appreciate what we're doing, especially when uh, other orthodontists, many orthodontists, many general dentists are not doing this because we're not trained in dental school to do it or ortho school, although it's getting better. I'm finding a lot of orthodontists in my area now are starting to use some of the appliances I've been using for 35 years, so I'm very happy about that. But I think uh, revitalizing my interest in dentistry or, or revitalizing the, the interest in, in pursuing this of uh, general dentists Getting them excited about going to the office is really important. So I think growing your practice is important, increasing your profit and your income for sure. Um, improving the health of your patients is great. I mean, it just makes you feel so good. And revitalizing your interest in energy, you're going excited. I mean, I'm still excited to go to the office, although I still like playing golf. And I still, <laughs> I got a great staff, great patients, appreciate what I do. I mean, it's a great way to practice, and certainly, I figure I can practice forever. You know, why would I? Why would I quit and and go play golf every day or, or get bored? I mean, I'm very excited what I do. This summer, I even took a, a, a hundred hour course on Invisalign and got my uh, fellowship because of the, the the trend today is about Invisalign. All the patients are asking about Invisalign because they're doing so much marketing. So I need to know more about this, and I need to incorporate this into my practice, along with the functional appliances, along with the braces, Invisalign. And so now I can do everything, you know. And I was doing a little bit of Invisalign before, but now the, the, the Invisalign trays are better now, and and you've got the Smile Direct Club, uh, 100 offices all across the United States and Canada, who are offering Invisalign directly to the public and, and avoiding the orthodontist and the general dentist. And the public are going for these half price sales, but 
there's no way they're doing doing as good a job as we could do comprehensively treating the patients. Right. So we have to compete with them. So anyway, that's kind of what I'm doing. Yeah, I mean, you you have to find ways to to really stand out in the market. You know, I mentioned that briefly just before, but you know, from a marketing perspective, it makes the practice more desirable because there, there are things that maybe you know the the practice next door or the even in in that immediate area and or the corporate practices they're not offering these things, and we have to find ways to. Um, really differentiate these practices that we're working with. And I would, you know, we, we always try and push our practices to think about things like this because it's, it's a great way to market the practice. It shows how you're different. That's right. There's a, there's a book on that, actually, uh, written by Jack Trout, Differentiate or Die. Yep. And he goes into, and he goes into all different ways that, that corporations have to change. Like, for instance, Kodak. I mean, they didn't get into digital soon enough. Right. And, and they should have because, you know, film went out. And all kinds of different businesses are like that that are important. So that's why the dentist who's trained to do fillings and root canals and, and dentures has to, has to change his practice because you need, to, you need to diversify, as you just mentioned, and do more services for more patients. Then you have you do more things for, for, for a lesser number of patients. You don't need as many patients if you do more services. Exactly right. So, doctor, tell us a couple of success stories of doctors that have attended your seminars, ones that maybe were skeptical um, but decided to, to come and venture um, into, your, into your courses and, and to explore expanding these treatments in their general practice. Do you have a couple success stories that you want to share with us? I think the most important thing to think about is the fact that orthodontists who taught us in dental school did nothing to encourage us to get into ortho. <laughs> They told us we couldn't do it, we were too stupid, nobody could learn how to do this in a short period of time. You have to go to ortho school if you want to be good. And so most of general dentists coming to my courses really have taken a chance because they were told that they couldn't do this. And actually most of the dentists that come to my course, at least 50% are referred by someone who's taken my courses, which is great. But I think the thing that I like the most is that they come in and they tell them they, they, they go out a better dentist. They feel I have an understanding of, of, of how to treat children and, and, and recognize malocclusions because they weren't trained in dental school and learning to recognize jaw problems and how to treat them and snoring and sleep apnea problems and how to treat them and especially treating their own children. Because a lot, some orthodontists and some general dentists have been trained to extract teeth and do surgery. But if you treat early, you can avoid all that. So they've, they've told me that, boy, they really love the fact they could treat their own children in a holistic way where they didn't do any extractions and no surgery. And that was huge for them. And also we, we stress airway and breathing and that's, that's a whole subject in itself on how to make sure kids can breathe through their nose and out their mouth and no tongue thrusting and all these problems and, and ADHD, attention deficit disorder and all these other problems, snoring, sleep apnea, all the problems the kids have when they can't breathe properly, we get the tonsil and adenoids out, and on and on and on. But two success stories money-wise are, I had a dentist phone me, I guess about five years ago, and said that he took my course 10 years ago, and he just grossed two million, just in ortho, in 10 years. And he phoned to thank me very much. Now, he just, he just phoned to say that you really made me a lot of money, I really appreciate it. And I thought that was kind of neat. And then I, the thing I've started doing now is I'm trying to reinvent myself every day. So the, the other thing I've started doing is mini residencies in my office. So I have dentists come to my office and I actually train them hands-on how to treat work on patients. And I give the patient a discount on their services. So a mother comes in with three kids. I said, we'll give you $1,000 off the treatment. But my dentists who are trained to, to treat you will be doing the treatment. And the mother says, great, thank you very much. And we're there to supervise. And I'm setting these all, all over the states in Canada now. I've got seven of them going now because the first one's so successful. But the guy that recommended I do this, um, I think within the, as soon as he took my course, the in-office course, he started almost 200 patients in two years. Oh, wow. Wow. So he started 200 patients in two years. I mean, unbelievable. And now he's running a, a mini resi in his office. Oh, no kidding. So it's just compounding. It's just it's fantastic. I mean, it's just... It's great to see these guys loving what they're doing, making a profit in what they're doing, and having patients appreciate what they're doing. I mean, that's, 
that's the biggest thing. You you have to feel appreciated. I'm sure you too feel appreciated when you help a dentist and, and you help them with some ideas on how to market and improve their practice and communication. I mean, it, it makes you feel good when they phone you and, and thank you for, for your efforts because we want to, everybody wants to be appreciated. And if you do ortho, TMD, and sleep, you will be appreciated. And so you had mentioned that, um, you know, that specific dentist had done over 200 cases. Can you provide our listeners with um, just some realistic numbers of what that could look like profit-wise for their practice? Or even revenue. Well, it's about $5,000 a case. Wow. So that's, that's close to a million dollars. Wow. So, I mean, that's... No, no, it, it's, it's, it's significant, but... And also, remember, the staff can help you with a lot of the work. The staff can do a lot of the records and the, ad, and the, and the marketing and the, and the education and... But it's a, it's a total deal. When you want to, if you want to be good at this, I mean, um, I've had dentists bring six staff to the first course. We we teach the staff too, or the, you should call them a team. The team. Sure. Bring the team to the course and train the team, and then the team educates the patients, because we found that the patients actually listen to the team members more than they listen to us. Much the same in a hospital. If my doctor is talking to me in the hospital, I'm looking right at the nurse. If she's looking good and happy, I'm going with what he says. If she's got her head up in the air and shaking her head, I'm not going anywhere near that, that diagnosis. <laughs> I mean, they know. And, and so I go by the nurses in the hospital, and my patients go by me a little bit, but mostly by my staff because they know. And, and my, you have to spend time and efforts educating your team. And I do that. I'm, I'm, I'm educating them all the time. I, I give them actually Scott Manning's books to read, and and I tell them we're going to have a staff meeting on this book, and then I give them all a bottle of wine because they read the book, and then we have, we <laughs> talk about the book. So I'm always stimulating them, always testing them, and and you have to do that, and they like it. It's like it's like a little book club that you got going on there. Yeah, with a little with a little wine. That's right. <laughs> That's, That's what book clubs are all about, Sean. Wine, yeah. they, 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 wine club i think it's a book (laughs) (laughs) jokes on them right (laughs) so just to kind of recap some of the the benefits of expanding treatment in a general practice i mean you're looking at growing your practice and increased profitability and income right i mean improve the health of your patients revitalize your interest in dentistry and then the kind of the easy one the bonus in my eyes is earning ce credits right would you agree with those absolutely absolutely they need ce credits to get their license and this is a, a nice way to do it because they're, they're taking a course they're really going to enjoy and they're really going to be able to help their patient and, and immediately implement it, right? Because my courses are hands-on. I mean, they trace x-rays, they bend wires, they examine patients' temporal mandibular joints. They, it's all a hands-on course. There's 12 lab exercises. And there's, there's, there's uh, four tests they have to write at the end. And then they get um, AGD accreditation and they get uh, their, their dental board accreditation. Their, their, uh, and, and so all, the, all my courses are accredited by AGD and all the dental boards. So, so they, I mean, there's no problem because my manuals are almost 300 pages each. Wow. And so they're very comprehensive and they have to pass tests and they have to bend wires and they have to do all these things. They have to do records on five patients and show me the records. And then we have advanced courses after the beginning courses. We have level one and level two. Also, all my courses are online now. So I've got a level one ortho, level two ortho, TMD, and sleep all online. So we have a lot of a lot of dentists taking the online courses, and then the online courses, they have to pass a test every 20 minutes. To get 80% on the test, they can go to the next one. If not, they're penalized and have to watch me again. So they'd rather watch me once and pass the test and move on. So it's, it's um, there's no foolishness here. We, we make sure you learn. And uh, the dentists who graduate from my courses are doing good work. And there's, there's other courses they can take afterwards. Right? Sure. Which is good. I was just saying, we've got a big meeting in Vegas coming up for anybody. Just go on rondoseminars.com and look up um, early treatment case finishing seminar in Vegas. And that's coming up in October. And I've got two outstanding orthodontists speaking. And I've got uh, Scott Manning and, and several general dentists who are really good, as well as Michael Gelb. Um, you know, from talking about airways and, but go on, I don't want to 
spend too much time talking about that, but just go online and... And so you don't often find, Dr. Rondo, where, you know, someone goes to a course or a seminar and they um, can take action right away. I mean, it's it's often that they, they, they probably are used to taking course after course and um, really not coming out of out of those courses, being able to, to truly take action on what they just learned. I mean, that's not very common in our industry, right? That's true. But by the end of my course, which is, goes over eight months, they come every two months, uh, many dentists have five or six cases going already. You know, they, they feel so comfortable. And, um, and the records that I teach are very comprehensive. My, I think my, my chart is 12 pages long for ortho. I mean, it's just, it's just it's tremendous. And I've, I've had them checked by orthodontic friends of mine. And I've, and I've had to check my dental boards, and they, 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 they think my records are extremely comprehensive. And again, if you take good records, you can make the right diagnosis and you do the right treatment plan. So, yes, yeah, so I'm very proud of that. Now, a couple of things that are interesting. Um, regarding sleep dentistry, that's something which dentists are not taught in dental school, right? Right. No dentist takes a course and learns how to treat, make snoring appliances, and treat sleep apnea. Yet the American Dental Association passed a resolution in October of 2017, two years ago, that all dentists must screen for sleep apnea, life-threatening sleep apnea, and yet it's not taught in the dental schools. So now they're trying to figure out how to incorporate it. They passed a resolution, and yet the dentists aren't trained to do it. It's kind of silly, but anyway, at least they passed a resolution. <laughs> Notice that we really should be helping because a lot of patients with sleep apnea will go on that CPAP, the, the uh, continuous positive airway right. pressure device that blows air up the nose all night with an air compressor. You look like and Darth Vader. 70% failure rate. <laughs> Darth Vader, look, that's right. And, and um, very, a, high success, a high failure rate, 70% failure rate, whereas oral appliances probably have a 90% success rate. So in patient compliance. So really, dentists need to get in this, and, and it's a... It, it, for sure, there's more and more courses every year on this, and it's something which I would encourage all dentists to think about doing because, again, you're, 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 you're saving marriages by, by preventing snoring, and you're prolonging the patient's life because if the patient has severe sleep apnea, the statistics say they live 10 years less. And with sleep apnea, they get, they get, they get high blood pressure, they get, they get strokes, they get, they get heart attacks, they get type 2 diabetes. Alzheimer's, dementia, which nobody wants, more chance of cancer. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Everybody, I think, almost every debilitating disease is going to be is going to be attributed to lack of oxygen at night caused by sleep apnea. Twenty five percent of the population has it. It's a serious problem. And fifty percent of men over fifty snore. And you ladies after menopause have to worry too. A high percentage of ladies in my practice. Um, after menopause snore. So well, don't tell me that. <laughs> yeah, see, you got a long way to go. But see, it's still it's a real serious problem. And, and the medical profession, their, their solution is not as good as ours. Like our solution is an oral appliance to gently move the jaw forward and open up the airway. And their solution is to blow air through your nose all night with a compressor. I mean, it's, and the patients much prefer our approach. But we, again, Dentists have to take courses in this, but I feel after a two-day course um, and, and reading my manual, you'll be able to do it. So encourage all dentists not just take my course, but take other courses in, in sleep apnea because that's something you really should think about doing. Yeah, we couldn't agree more. We have uh, a lot of our clients are either already doing this or um, you know taking your course or other people's courses. So that we see this trend um, and we think it's extremely smart. There is... We, when Sean and I run our marketing campaigns, uh, you know, when we talk about the benefits of having an oral appliance versus like you're talking about the CPAP as another solution, doesn't mean that it's oh, the only solution, but as right. another solution, we just see right. a tremendous response. This is such a pain point for um, a lot of families. The spouse is snoring, they're interrupted sleep. Um, they have interrupted sleep, they're tired all day. Uh, there's a lot of pain points that you can hit upon in your marketing to really attract these people to your practice. And uh, so we, th- we, we agree. We think this is smart. Good. Well, I think it's and, – and dentists should be doing this. It's a lot more fun, too, than doing general dentistry and, and doing fillings all day and giving needles. Like, it's this is easy. You take a couple of impressions. 
is do some sleep studies. We teach how to do sleep studies. The staff can do a lot of the work, and the patient really, they're easy to wear. And um, again, the patient really appreciates it. I met a guy in the airport one time, and I said, how you doing? He said, I don't recognize you. And his wife turned to him and said, he's the guy that saved our marriage, stupid. <laughs> I, I made him an oral appliance, and she says, save the marriage. So anyway, I mean, it, it's, it's fun things like that happen all the time. So I'm... I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm really happy that I got into it, and I'm trying to influence as many dentists as I can to to take courses in this and really learn how to help their patients. And just, again, health-orientated. I mean, if we can help prevent heart attacks and strokes and diabetes, and we can help save marriages, and we can get paid for it while doing it and feel good about it and get thanked for it, I mean, it's just, it's just the way to go. Every day you get compliments instead of people saying the needle hurts or, or my filling hurts or... You know, it's just we got into dentistry, and I and I liked it for 10 years. But after that, I said, you know, I got to do something different. I, I just want to do something different. And, and I really like what I'm doing now. And I think most of the general dentists that get into this really like it, and, they're, and they don't want to go back. And so I encourage them to, to, to look at these areas to increase their income. And you, you sort of have to be proactive or reactive. Reactive, you kind of sit here and watch what's going on in the, in, the, in, in the profession. And what is going on is there's 52 corporations in the U.S. now um, competing against solo practices. And they've got all these new grads with all these big loans coming out that have to work for them because they can't set up their own practice. So they've got a ready supply of, of, uh, of dentists to do it, and they've got all kinds of money back behind them, the teachers' association, everybody, backing them up and so they're out there just trying to compete and so we have to look at things we got to be proactive and we got to sit down and say okay how are we going to compete with these guys before our income goes so low we can't afford to take a course you know so so i think you teach that and and uh, scott manny teaches that and i'm i'm trying to teach the same thing let's let's get proactive let's Let's increase our skills so we, we can compete with these guys. I know that a lot of the, some of the corporations are hiring dentists now to teach sleep and teach ortho and teach TMD. Not so much TMD. Everybody's afraid of that one. But, and it's, um, it's not that much a mystery if you really get into it. Um, one thing I should add that, that is, that I just written an article in, in Scott Manning's Dental Success Today, which I'd be happy to send to anybody. It's on bruxism, and it's why night guards are harmful to you, okay? Because, first of all, night guards um, don't prevent bruxism. Anybody who puts in an, an upper night guard knows that the patient bites into it and sometimes bites through it. So if they're biting through it and destroying it, how can you say it's preventing bruxism? It doesn't prevent bruxism. It actually makes it worse. It does protect the teeth from wearing down. It also uh, doesn't prevent headaches. When you bite on this thing all night, you get more headaches. They wake up with headaches in the morning. It also is very dangerous. I've got, I've got a stack of patients, probably 50. I've just been collecting the last two months that were, they were jaw was clicking and the dentist made them a night guard and now their jaw locked. They can't open their mouth and they're in intense pain. It's all because of the night guard. There was one in today. And the other thing that's really interesting is that these night guards also cause snoring and sleep apnea to be worse. So if you've got sleep apnea and you're a moderate sleep apnea, you could wear the night guard and you could be a severe sleep apnea and really compromise your health. So much so that the American Academy of Prostodontists have come out with a declaration that none of the prostodontists are allowed to make a night guard unless the patient first has a sleep study to see if they've got sleep apnea. So it's really, really uh, a real serious problem, and there's a lot of stuff going on. So I'd be happy to send that article to anybody. I hand it, I send all the dentists in my area. I said, look, you don't have to send me the patients, but don't put night guards in patients, because they're, they're, and that's all they're taught. I've been all over the world lecturing, not all over the world, but in many places in the world, and everywhere I go, and all over the United States, the only, the only splint that dentists learn to make in dental school is an upper night guard. And it's damaging for all the reasons I just gave you. So I'd be happy to send that article out and, and, and tell the dentist to please avoid. So what's, what the problem is, what we're taught about TMJ in dental school is all wrong. We're taught to grind down the teeth when that's not even the problem. And we're taught to put in night guards in everybody with no, 
no sense of what it's going to do. In fact, it's, it's damaging in most kind of cases. So it's, it's uh, anyway, that's, uh, that's all I have to say about night guards. <laughs> yeah. It's really interesting. It is interesting. And um, I think that, you know, it, you would assume that dental schools would update their criteria of the curricular um, of not teaching these things, but it doesn't sound like they are. No. So what I did, I mean, I've always been lucky. I've always had women in my practice who felt strongly enough to tell me when they were unhappy. And I had several women throw the night guards back at me and say, you are a crook. You charged me this money and it made me worse. So what I did is I went out and found out who the top dentists in the world were in TMJ. And I phoned them up and I said, I want to come to your office. I don't care what you charge me. 500, 1,000 a day. I want to see what you do in your office every day. And so I went to these offices and I learned. And now the dentists come to my office and pay me 1,000 a day. (laughs) <laughs> huh. But I know. Full circle. So that's what I do. I went out and just, yeah, I just went out and said, you know, just tell me what you're doing. Because, I mean, what we learned at dental school is not working. And I'm not going to keep doing this if it doesn't work. And I spent some time with some of the top guys in the world. And um, and, and I learned a lot and went back and, and, and applied it to my practice and studied. And I got a diplomat in, in TMJ. And, and that really helped me because I had to study a lot for that. And... Um, Anyway, I mean, I pursued my education. I think if I'm going to teach, I have to have some credentials. Absolutely. You know, and so I've got some credentials in sleep and TMD and ortho, and I think that helped. And it made me, it made me study, it made me learn. So, um, but I love to teach. I mean, I love to teach, and and uh, and the dentists take my course are are really good. I mean, they they pay attention. They don't sit and read the newspaper, and they don't go in their cell phones. They sit there and they pay attention. Because they're paying me, right? They're, they're paying me, and they want to learn. So it's very good to teach graduate dentists. More fun than, say, dental school, probably. Because in dental school, you know, a lot of the dentists don't pay attention. But in, when they're paying you, they pay attention, and they want to learn. And so, But again, 50% are, re- are recommended, so that really helps, too. That's awesome. I'm sure you, people recommend you, too. Yeah. Oh, of course, of course. Well, Dr. Rondo, we want to thank you um, so much for for joining us today on our podcast and for sharing all this really, um, really valuable information with not only us, but obviously all of our listeners as well. I know they're just going to really, really enjoy this this, uh, episode in particular. Um, If any of our listeners are interested um, in any of Dr. Rondo's courses or adding some of these new um, high-value revenue streams to their practice, um, please don't hesitate to visit rondoseminars.com. That's R O N. D E A U seminars.com, or you can actually call them as well at 1 866 507 3520. Dr. Rondo, thank you so much once again. We, we really, really appreciate you joining us today. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much. You did a great job. You do. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Okay, bye bye. We hope all of you enjoyed today's podcast. Don't forget to get your free copy of Jackie's new book before this special promotion is over. We're offering the book entirely free, even with free shipping, to all of our podcast listeners. And you can order your free copy today by visiting dentaldisruption.com. If you feel so compelled, we'd really appreciate you subscribing and leaving a review for our podcast to help us share our educational content with even more dentists just like you. You can subscribe on iTunes or your favorite podcast platform to make sure you receive all of our future episodes. I also encourage you to visit our website at mydentalagency.com or email us at podcast at mydentalagency.com if you have any questions or comments. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks, guys.